Hello and welcome from Bamberg, which is where I shoot my first vlog with the EOS R5. So the first time out in the field with this camera or out in the city. So I've come here to the old town hall and what you see behind me already, the sky is beginning to glow, which I was hoping for because today there was a lot of rain, gray skies, but yeah, to the west as usual, I look for gaps in the sky. And yeah, this is what I saw today. So I came here hoping for something like this. And I really hope that this will become even more colorful in the next minutes. Let's quickly go through the setup here. So I'm on a tripod as usual, have the cable release, and then also I use the Kaze Slim Filter Kit. So that's the K9 kit. And the good thing about this kit with the Slim Filters is that I can shoot at 15 millimeters without vignetting. So I'm using the RF1535 and I'm at 15 millimeters to get the complete scene in. And yeah, it's just the perfect setup. And yeah, now, I really have to start shooting because as you can see the sky gets better and better and yeah, I'll also take many photos also long exposures because in the end I try to get some yeah, movement in the people which come by so maybe in 20 minutes when I can shoot longer exposures maybe I even use a filter I want some motion there so like ghosts striding through the picture or I just clone out all the people by taking multiple exposures and, and leave the bridge empty but we'll see for now time to shoot So I've now switched off the R5 to cool down a bit. Now just kidding, so it's not hot. Uh, I just wait for the right light again because you saw on the time-lapse I already had a burning sunset. Better than I expected actually. And yeah, now I'm waiting for the blue hour to get some long exposures and also for the lights on the town hall. So what I found is I'm here on this bridge and it's wobbling a bit. And for long exposures, that's not ideal because the image will be, or the images will be on sharp. I expected this already a few years ago. I was here with the 5DSR and I couldn't take long exposures when people were walking across the bridge. But with the R5, I will now test how the IBIS works during a long exposure. So I'm on the tripod, but I still switch on the IBIS. And yeah, I'll just see if it is able to compensate all this wobbling and if I can get a sharp exposure, because if this is possible, this would be a game changer for me because very often I'm on a bridge and if cars driving across this bridge, you usually cannot take photos of long exposures because everything will vibrate just a bit. I had this, for example, in Chicago, there's one bridge where you can take photos and you always have to be careful if the trains pass by beneath you, it's shaking, everything's shaking. So you have to wait until the trains have passed, take the photo and the same here with the people walking by. So now with the IBIS, I hope to actually get some sharp exposures. I have no idea. I mean, I'm already quite glad with the photos I've got. So sunset and now it's blue hour. So let's see what we get. So it's now the end of the shoot and actually I have to film in the normal 4K mode because as you would expect with this camera the high quality mode is no longer possible after one hour of shooting and yeah I only took one photo which you saw this scene behind me and I took a lot of photos during sunset, blue hour, long exposures, I was on, I was off so we now head to the office and yeah look how the image quality actually is. I also had long exposure noise deactivated, I had it activated. So really making sure I get everything and yeah, now we're gonna see yeah, how this turns out. So I'm now back in the office and I already showed you the final photo, which I processed using my typical workflow, same as I would on a 5DSR image. So I had bracketing, I had focus stacking and yeah, overall the processing felt nearly the same for this scene. It was maybe a little easier to blend because of the um, little increased dynamic range, especially the ISO invariance, which I showed in previous videos. So I could pull up the shadows more. And by this 
getting the exposures a little more equal before the blending and that always makes the blending much easier so that's nice but also i didn't use the latest version of lightroom or any raw converter yet so since yesterday actually there's a first version with a or first official version of the dng converter and lightroom out which supports the r5 before that i was using the beta so yeah i'm gonna check that out but also still hoping for capture one to support the r5 which is when i gonna repeat most of my tests i think and really do some more pixel peeping because i'm confident that this can also give a bump in detail and maybe a dynamic range which i can get out of the files but for now um, i'm quite impressed by the files also i didn't do too long exposures so the longest exposure i took that evening was maybe 30 seconds and i already knew that for this i wouldn't see any hot pixels so that's fine so let's sum up the shoot i took photos for 80 minutes 160 frames all from the same scene it's quite typical for me when i stick with the composition and just want to make sure to get the best possible light and afterwards 50 percent of the battery was drained also the high quality video mode didn't work which didn't bother me too much because i mean you saw the video it was at iso 12800 and for me it looked quite good so <laughs> I'm pretty impressed by that. For me, that's totally fine. If this means using the normal 4K mode and I get such results, that's fine for me. And yeah, handling of the camera feels like a Canon Series 5 camera. Everything where I yeah, expect it. So it's like shooting with a 5TSR nearly, just a little smaller. I have a tilt display, which is nice, which I also use now to see that I'm in frame. So yeah, a lot of little improvements and also the camera feels quite stable so it didn't crash on me yet which i've heard of some other photographers which sa who said yeah it might not turn on if it's too warm and stuff like that fortunately i didn't have that yet so <laughs> um yeah let's not jinx this uh, i really hope it stays that way uh, but i have some problem if i want to use the interval timer for photo so interval photos it doesn't release so there's a bug in the firmware i think also i had one other photographer who has the same so i hope ken will fix that but i think for now enough talk let's quickly go through some of the files maybe yeah discuss them quickly see how in the real world the uh, dynamic range performed although i'm not on the latest version of lightroom so i expect slight improvements but yeah, we can still have a look and draw some conclusions, I think. So as you can see, I took a lot of photos, which is typical for me when I shoot sunrise or sunset. So I first settle on a composition and then I just shoot away as the light changes to get the best light. So here it was sunset and then we went into blue hour. But I want to show you one comparison here, which I think is very important. So I want to show you ISO invariance in the real world and why it is important to expose correctly, even if you use a modern camera who has or which has a good dynamic range and everything where you can pull up the shadows. But be reminded, pulling up the shadows is the same like basically increasing the ISO and getting the shadows brighter this way so that's what iso invariance means so pulling up the shadow you always introduce noise but with older cameras like the 5 dsr it was just a lot more noise so let's zoom in here on this image and what you see on the left that's very clean that's basically and we are now at two to one so 200 percent so this is a exposure a normal exposure which was basically filling the complete range of the histogram. So I didn't have cutoff highlights, didn't have cutoff shadows, it was correct. And here on the right side, there's an exposure which was underexposed by two stops and I had to pull up the shadows. And you see there's much more noise and that's to be expected because that's basically comparing ISO 100 shot with a ISO 400 shot or slightly more so. so it's possible that further versions of Lightroom and there's, a, as I said already, one out which natively supports the R5 and Capture One improves on this a bit more. But there will always be a benefit in exposing correctly. And uh, let's now show you what I mean by that by looking at the histogram. So if I now zoom out and go to the develop module. So this exposure here was exposed correctly, I'd say. 
or I could even have exposed a little more to the right, but then I would have lost some of the highlights. So I'm really as far to the right as possible without losing here those bright areas. And the dynamic range of the camera was enough to get everything, so I don't have cut off shadows. And with the R5, I can just pull up the shadows, pull down the highlights and get a beautiful exposure. Now, if we look at this one, so I did bracketing. So this exposure is the dark exposure. So exposed, underexposed by two stops. And although I don't have much cut off dark tones, so just here on this side, but the rest of the frame looks quite okay. I would have to pull up by two stops and then can, I can apply the same processing as to the other image to get an equal result. And this pulling up by two is basically the same for the shadows as like pulling up the ISO. So hence I get more noise. It doesn't look so bad as it would have looked with the 5 g but still there's more noise. And if you want a high quality result, it's always good to expose correctly. And if necessary, also take bracketing exposures even with those modern cameras, because you can later easily blend those to get highest quality results. And yeah, if you're interested in such workflows, I have videos on exposure blending on my YouTube channel. I have also start to finish videos where I show everything in all its detail, all my processing. So it's on my homepage, just check that out. But yeah, I think for this video, it's now enough. Maybe just one more thing. I was talking about using the IBIS to compensate the wobbling on the bridge. So I just had the IBIS on and all the images are basically sharp. Um, what does it mean? I don't know because I didn't do a scientific comparison. So uh, I should have shot direct comparison where I had the IBIS on, had wobbling and then the IBIS off. But yeah, as I tried it, as I switched off the IBIS, then there weren't enough people to cause the wobbling. So I waited and waited and then the light changed. So I wanted to make sure I get it sharp. So I turned the IBIS on again, <laughs> enough waffling here. So I really have to test it in the future. The only thing I can say is having the IBIS on with a 30 or 20 second exposure, at least it doesn't introduce softness in the image. I, at least I didn't see it. All the images are sharp. In the future, I'll try to really test it and see if it can compensate such wobbling or if my tripod already compensated it. I don't know and I'm sorry that I didn't do a proper test here, but this evening it was also not primarily about testing. It was just about shooting and using the camera. More videos will follow and I'll have more findings in the future. So make sure to subscribe for that and yeah, see you soon.